All right. So remember that what we're trying to do in economics is we're trying to deal with the problem of scarcity, right? And the problem of scarcity says that we have unlimited desires, unlimited wants, but we have limited resources. Now, our unlimited wants fulfill our satisfaction. So this side is the utility side, okay, or the benefit, right? the benefits when we achieve make when we get benefits from making a decision we're trying to satisfy fi, satisfy our unlimited wants but we have limited resources right and what that means is remember every benefit has a cost associated with it right so the limited resources they contribute to our costs okay i have a limited amount of money and I use that money to buy things to give me satisfaction, right? Well, that money goes towards the costs. When, and the reason that, my, that it's limited is because I can only pay out so many costs. I want all the utility I can get, but I can only get as much as I can afford to pay out for the costs. When I'm out of money, when I'm out of physical resources, when I'm out of time, when I'm out of mental resources, I'm done and I can't have any more utility because I have spent all that I have, okay? And so what we have here is an idea where we have to budget our costs so that we can allocate them to our wants and gain benefits. We have to pick and choose which things will give us benefits because we have limited resources to apply to the costs. We call, and the process of trying to figure that out, trying to allocate where we're going to put all our resources to get benefits, that's called budgeting. It is a budget, okay? And I'm going to give you a definition for that right now. All right, so... Let's think about your household and all of the things that you buy. I mean, how many different things does your do people buy in your household? It's got to be at least a couple hundred things, right? Bread, milk, shoes, shirts, okay? Uh, you buy phone service, Amazon Prime or Netflix, right? If you made a list and sat down for a few hours and just tried to make a list of every single item that you buy, chances are it's a couple hundred things, okay? Those are all the products that you or your household buys with the limited income that you have, okay? Now, let's pretend that all 200 of those items are all on a, uh, on a, a bar graph, okay? All the way across, a really long slider, okay? And... Let's say you got milk. You can move milk up one at a time. You know, you can get one gallon of milk or two gallons of milk or three, four, five, six, seven gallons of milk, right? How many loaves of bread, okay? How much cell phone service are you using, okay? How many pairs of shoes are you buying? How many shirts are you buying, right? So here's the thing. Because you have a limited income, there is a limit to how many, uh, how many places you can set each of those products. Um, let's say that you spend all of your money and you buy a certain amount of milk, a certain amount of bread, a certain number of shirts, uh, you buy Netflix, you have all these things, and you've spent all of your money, that is your profile to get as much satisfaction as you can. Now, if you say to yourself, hey, I want another gallon of milk. Well, you've spent all your money, so you can't have another gallon of milk. Well, you can. Guess what you can do to get another gallon of milk? You can go down on a loaf of bread to go up on a gallon of milk. Or you can go down on two gallons of milk and a bunch of bread and other groceries and things to go up on a pair of shoes. So in order to get more of something else, you have to give up some of this thing over here. That is a cost. Remember, you, a cost is something that you give up to get something else. It's an opportunity cost. It is an implicit cost. You have to give up a loaf of bread in order to get a gallon of milk. That's an important concept. And remember, the law of increasing opportunity cost says that the more of one thing you try to get in your profile of products, the more other things you're going to have to give up. Okay? And so, 
imagine that we, ha we have this. The limit on how many of all the things that you can buy, given your limited income, we call that a budget constraint. Okay, So I want you to write down this definition. A budget constraint is the maximum limit of all possible combinations of products that a household can buy given its income and the prices of the products you're buying. How many different combinations of those 200 products could you have? Lots of them, probably, you know, trillions and trillions of possibilities. You know, as soon as you move milk up by one and bread down by one, even if you didn't change everything else, that's still a new combination of products that you're purchasing for that month. Okay. And so there's lots of different possibilities. You can move clothing and shoes all the way down to zero, and then you can move groceries up higher if you have more people to feed. That's why people with less income and more people to feed wind up not having as much money to be able to buy clothing because they can't afford it sometimes. Okay. And so this general idea of a budget constraint is conceptual because it's impossible for us to really put it on paper, okay? Because there's 200 different items and trillions of different possibilities. Well, here's what we're about to do. We're about to understand the idea of utility maximization by instead of graphing all possible products, okay? We're gonna focus on just two possible products. We're gonna try and understand a budget constraint based on a comparison of only two things. We're gonna take everything off of the list so that there are only two items on the list. So for example, we could compare bread and milk, or we could compare shoes and, um, I don't know, and mashed potatoes or chicken nuggets, okay? But what we're gonna compare is we're gonna make a comparison between pants and shirts. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to draw what is called a budget line on a coordinate plane. Well, what's a budget line? Well, it's a, it's a representation of a budget constraint. Instead of trying to massively consider the constraints on 200 items that a household purchases, we're gonna limit it to only two things. A budget line is a graphical representation of a budget constraint considering only two products and the income of a household. And what I'm gonna do now is you need to be able to draw a budget line. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so here we've got a coordinate plane and here's the situation we're being given. You, you have to be given the price of each of the products and you have to be given the income of the household, okay? Um, now what we're gonna do after I show you this is I'm gonna show you how to work backwards. How I get, if I give you a budget uh, line, then you can go backwards and find out the income or the prices of the products. But let's move forward first, okay? All right, so uh, we're going to call the pants, we're going to call that good X, all right? So we're going to put X in parentheses, and shirts, we're going to call that good Y. Why am I doing X and Y? Well, because there's a Y axis, the vertical axis, and there's the X axis. And so this vertical axis, which is representing shirts, I'm going to write shirts here. And down here, the horizontal axis is pants. I'm gonna say pants. Now, shirts are $20 each. So I'm gonna put $20. Pants are $25 each. So I'm gonna put 25. And we're gonna say that every one of these lines is one. So this is one pair of pants, two pairs of pants, three pairs of pants. If I put a dot right here, let me tell you what that, that dot represents. That dot represents a combination of purchases. One of the things that we're going to learn in microeconomics is that you can maximize your utility by buying a mix of goods. Instead of spending all your money on one thing, if you split your money between two items, you're likely to get more utility overall. Okay, But let me tell you what that dot represents. The coordinates of that dot are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight pants, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven shirts. So this point, eight comma seven, means eight pairs of pants and seven shirts. And we can calculate how much it would cost to buy eight pairs of pants and seven shirts. 
If we do 8 times 25, that's 200, and 7 times 20, that's 140. So this point right here would cost $340, okay? Well, this, this household only has $200 in income. They can't afford to buy 8 pairs of pants and 7 shirts, so this purchase, this combination of goods is outside of their budget. It's beyond their budget, okay? Well, let's draw a line that represents their budget, and we can see clearly that it really is outside of their budget, okay? So the way we're going to draw a budget line is, the first thing we're going to do is, for each one of the axes, we're going to divide income by price, okay? So we're going to divide income by price. And we're going to do that for each one of the products. So for pants, we're going to divide 200 by 25. 200 divided by 25, that's 8. And so we're going to go from here, and we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and we're going to put a dot on the x-axis, right on the x-axis. That represents if we were to purchase all pants and no shirts. So this point is eight zero, right? That's eight pairs of pants and zero shirts, okay? Now we're gonna do the exact same thing for shirts. We're gonna divide income $20 by 20. Well, 200, or excuse me, $200 divided by 20, that's 10. So this household could buy 10 shirts and no pants at all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. We're gonna put a dot there. That dot represents zero pants and 10 shirts. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to get a ruler and we're going to connect those two dots with a straight line. Okay, so I'm going to put this here and this here. We're going to draw a straight line. And this line is our budget line. Okay, now let me tell you a couple things about the budget line. Okay, the budget line will tell us three things. There's three locations on this graph. There's on the line, there's inside the line, and there's outside of the line. All of these points on the outside of the line, this household can't afford any of these combinations. So we can see clearly this point, eight pants and seven shirts, it's outside of the budget, so they can't afford it. Anything under the line in here, so for example, can this family afford to buy two pairs of pants and five shirts? You betcha. In fact, they'll have some money left over because it's going to cost $50 for the two pants and $100 for the five shirts. That's $150. They'll have 50 bucks left over. But here's the key. In microeconomics, we don't want to have any money left over. I know that sounds weird. But if we're saving money, if we're going to save money, that's a third product. So the three things we're going to do with the money is buy pants, buy shirts, and save money. So if we're going to include saving money, that's got to be one of the axes. We need to have an axis for pants and an axis for saving money. So it's a waste to do anything that is inside. This region, they can afford, but it's inefficient. And we don't want to be inefficient. We want to use our resources to the best of their ability so we can maximize our utility. Okay? The on the line is where we want to be. On the line, right on the line, we can afford to per make those purchases and it is efficient. It uses all of our resources to get what we need. And and so, for example, one of the best points is this one right here. That point right there is four pairs of pants and five shirts. That is an efficient use of the $200, and we will get a, um, the most that we can get out of that $200, which is four pairs of pants and five shirts. Okay? So, that is how you create a budget line, and that is how, how you interpret the budget line. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a budget line with incomplete information up here, and we're going to work our way backwards. All right, so what we have here is a budget line with product Y and product X. 
We're told what the income is. This household's income is $105. But what we don't know is what is the price of good X or product X and what is the price of product Y. Well, given the budget line, we can very easily determine their prices. All we have to do is go to the end, count how many, how many units can be purchased of product Y when we buy none of X, and then divide the income by that number. So let's see here. If we buy zero of product X, we can buy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of product Y. And if we divide income 105, if we divide $105 by seven, that's gonna equal 15. And therefore the price of good Y is 15. And we can check our answer by dividing income by price of Y, 105 divided by 15, that's seven. And therefore we would go from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there's our dot. Now if we do the same thing with product X, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? And so if we do 105 divided by 10, that's $10.50. And so, the price of X is going to be $10.50, okay? And we can do the same thing. We can check our answer. If we do 105 divided by 1050, the answer is going to be 10. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Put a dot there, connect with a straight line, and we've got our budget line. Now let's do one example where I give you the price of only one of them but I don't give you the price of the other one, and I don't give you the income. All right, so we've got this budget line here, and if we count up the ends, on this end we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six units of product X, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven units of product Y. We don't know the income, we don't know the price of X, but we do know the price of Y. The price of Y is $8. At $8 per unit, we know we can purchase 11 of them. Well, all we have to do is multiply those two. 11 times $8, that's $88. This household must have $88 available for their income. So with $88 divided by $8 per unit, they can buy 11 of them. Well, now that we know the income, we can find out what the price of X is. We know that with that $88, that this household can purchase six of them. So if we just do 88 divided by six, which is, let's see, six goes into 88, um, 14 and two thirds. So that's 14, basically $14 and about 67 cents. We could say 66 cents or 67 cents. So we're gonna say $14 and 67 cents is the price of good X, okay? And so you can see that which uh, we can either create a budget line given two prices and an income, or given a budget line, we can work backwards and find income and the prices of the products. You are gonna be expected to know how to do that, okay? All right, so this is budget lines. Now we're gonna move on to indifference curves.